Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be testing a cheap rangefinder. This is the So Dial 7x Digital Rangefinder for Golf that I picked up on Amazon for just £12.36. Now to give you an idea, if you went to buy a premium rangefinder you'd be paying well in excess of £300 more than you'd be paying for this guy. So the question is, how good is it? Is it actually usable? Is it worth it if you're thinking about going to find a cheap rangefinder? That's what we're here to find out today at West Hill. Guys, if you're new to the Golf Monthly channel, please do hit the subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss any of our videos. Hit the like button if you like what you're watching and also leave comments below. What do you think of this? What rangefinder do you have? Uh, leave a quick review below so that other people can find out which one might be right for them and for their game. But let's head out now onto the golf course here at West Hill, find out just how good this Sodile rangefinder really is. Right, so we're going to start here on the range at West Hill. Now that might sound like a strange place to begin, but uh, I've had this now for about three weeks and it does take a little bit of getting used to it. It's taken me a few rounds of golf to really get a feel for exactly how to pick up the right yardage. I feel like I'm able to do it now and I'm going to give you a little demo of how it works on the range here. Now, um, if you look at the top of the range finder, you've got two buttons. One says adjustion. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, one says mode. Uh, and really, the only button you really need is that adjustment button. That turns it on. And when you turn it on, you get a, um, a view through the lane finder with a, a line that depicts the green at the bottom, a middle line, and a small line at the top. The idea is that you keep pressing that button, that adjustment button, until the line at the top moves down and hits the top of the flag. Once you've got the top of the flag and the green, both in view, you'll get a yardage reading at the top of the rangefinder that you'll be able to work to. Now you can either keep pressing that adjustment button to move the little pointer down or you can hold it down uh, to get there. So I'm going to now aim towards the second uh, red flag out here on the range. I have no idea how far away it is uh, and I'm going to see if I can get a yardage. So turn it on by pressing that adjustment button. Uh, I'm going to hold down the um, the adjustment button to move that pointer down. It does take a little bit of time. It's not terribly quick, but it'll get there eventually. You should eventually get a yardage that you're happy with. I'd say one more. Yeah, that's giving me a yardage of 116 yards, which I suspect is probably uh, pretty good. It looks uh, about right to me. Uh, for me, 116 yards is a 54 degree wedge. So quick hit, see if that's right. And then we'll head out onto the golf course. So I'm going to, pretty much during this round of golf, going to be testing this uh, rangefinder up against uh, the one that I usually use, the one that I have in the bag. I've had it in the bag now for probably two years. It's a Bushnell Tor V4 Tor Edition rangefinder. It has slope, but the slope I have turned off. I don't really see the point of having the slope on it. I mean, I guess I could use it in practice rounds, but ultimately I wouldn't want it to be left on during competition rounds. So I just turn it off all the time. It is dead easy to use. Just point, shoot, uh, the rangefinder just gives you a little jolt, a little buzz um, when it hits the flag and you get a number. It's really good, it's really useful. I've loved using this for over the last few years. But there is a huge difference in price between these two rangefinders. In terms of the RRP, you're looking at over £300 difference between this Bushnell and this Sodile rangefinder. It's not a small amount. The question is, how does this compare? Okay, so sixth hole here at West Hill. And uh, this is where I've hit my drive to, so a good op opportunity to do a live test of this Sodal range finder. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find out the yardage, and you'll notice I've got a good view down towards the green, down towards the flags. I'm gonna get the yardage using this. I'm then gonna hit the shot based on this yardage, and then I'm gonna check it against what the Bushnell is telling me. Now, just uh, my naked eye, I, th there are uh, yardages on all the sprinkler heads at West Hill, but I haven't looked at any of those. And just by the naked eye, I'd say that I reckon I've got around about 100, and, between 180 and 190 to the flag. That's what I'd, I reckon it is, but I don't know. So let's check it using this to start with. So start by hitting that adjust button, move the um, clicker down until you get to the top of the flag. It takes a few clicks. It's faster just to keep hitting the button than it is to hold it down. Um, and... 
I'm gonna go one more. So that's saying 207. So it's saying it's a little bit further than I thought it was. And actually the wind's into, it's slightly downhill, but there's quite a bit of breeze here. So I'm gonna hit four iron. Um, and I think I'm gonna to have to hit it fairly well to get there. Um, yeah, this is looking like quite a tough shot actually. Okay, it's a little left, but I've hit it really well. And interesting, that is long and left. That's just, just over the back left edge of the green there. So I think I might have had a, possibly a slightly iffy yardage. Um, let's check it with the, um, with the Bushnell. Interesting. This is saying 180. And you'll notice, firstly, you'll notice how quick it was to buzz and pick up the yardage of 180 uh, and secondly you'll notice that there's 27 yards difference between the two rangefinders. I think the issue that I've had with the Sodar rangefinder is it because it's so light, because it sort of is so small, it's really quite hard to get those lines lined up exactly where you want them. Obviously I didn't quite get it right, I'm 27 yards out. So with the, the yardage that I now think is about right, this is actually looking to me like a five iron shot. Um, I've also, obviously, having already hit one, I know that it's not quite a four iron. So uh, yeah, five iron seems to be the right club for me here. Well, that's a good shot. That's a much better shot than the first one. It's drawing nicely into the middle of the green and it's pitched on the middle of the green. It's past flag high. It's probably still got, it's probably still sort of 20 feet past the flag, but it's exactly where I'd want to be on this hole. So I think it goes to show that when you're getting a range finder, it is about precision and um, 27 yards difference when, um, when zapping the, uh, the flag from this sort of yardage out can make a big difference. Okay, so when the Sodal range finder comes through to you in the post, this is what you get. Uh, digital seven times golf scope with padded case. Um, the packaging, as you can see, is fairly rudimentary, as you'd expect for £12.36. Uh, inside, you'll get some instructions on how to operate um, the device. You'll also get a lens cleaner, which uh, is pretty useful, especially if you are a spectacle golfer like myself. You'll find multiple purposes for that. Um, and then inside, you have the padded case, as it mentioned, and then the range finder itself. The range finder is really uh, nice and compact. It sits really neatly in the hand. Uh, in terms of the battery, uh, you just have to open this side panel here that says open battery close. Just slide that open and inside you'll need to put two uh, circular three volt lithium batteries. Once you've done that, you should be up and running. Now, one of the slightly frustrating things about this little Sodal rangefinder is that in order for it to work, you have to have a completely sort of unobscured view of the flag and of the green. Uh, because it works, to, you have to get the point of the horizon with the flag exactly right to give you a yardage. If you don't have those two points, you can't get a yardage. And this is a scenario where I'm only about, I'm less than 100 yards away from this flag. I'd really want to know exactly what it was to go in here, but really I don't think this is going to give me a yardage that I can be confident with. Anything that I do get with this is gonna be a bit of a guess. So I'm gonna give it a go and see what it tells me. So again, turn it on, use the adjust button, um, and then move the pointer down till I get to the top of the flag, which obviously doesn't take as long because the flag's much bigger in the viewfinder. Uh, and I reckon I've got, a bit of a guess, but I reckon I've got 160, uh, I reckon I've got, sorry, not 160, 60 yards uh, using this. Uh, the Bushnell is telling me that actually I have 65. And you can see how much quicker it was getting this. Now, obviously there's not a huge amount of difference between 60 and 65 yards, I understand that. But if you're wanting to be precise with your wedges, you really want to know what it is to those, uh, to the flag. And as you can see, I've actually got a pretty good view of the flag from here. If, if it was more tucked away, um, behind a bunker, if it was, there was more of a guesswork involved, then obviously the yardage would be a little bit more precarious. But I reckon, so 65, playing slightly uphill, I reckon I've got about 70 yards. That's how I'm gonna play this. And that's about right. Okay, so ninth hole here at West Hill. It's a beautiful little par three. 
uh, we can do another quick live test. Um, now I know that this from here, the, the, the yardage marker just to the left of me on the T says 165, but the flags at the front, what exactly is that yardage? That's why we carry range finders. We, we carry them to find out exactly what the number is. Let's see if I can get it using this. Now you'll also notice, I'm slightly looking down towards the green. I've got a great view of that flag. I really should be able to pick up a pretty precise yardage using this from here, you would have thought. So turn it on, press that adjust button. Uh, move the top of the, the marker at the top down until I get to a point. Yeah, uh, it's, either one, it's either 165 or 155. I would say, I think it was 155. So this is slightly downwind, so I'm gonna hit a nine iron. My nine iron yardage is usually around about 150, but I think this is slightly down, slightly off the right hand side. So if it is 155, nine iron will be just about right. Let's give it a go. Okay, I've hit it pretty well. Slightly out the bottom of the club, but pretty good. And yeah, that's quite close actually. That's a little bit short of the flag, probably a couple of yards short of the flag, but dead on line. I would be really happy with that. Now, one thing I failed to mention is what this mode button is for on the top of the rangefinder. So uh, basically you can use this to get up a slightly different display and you can keep tapping away on the top of the rangefinder uh, and you can input the height of the flag. That will calculate the yardage that you're looking for. I don't know what the heights of any golf flags are. Uh, I don't know uh, exactly when I would use it. I haven't used it so far. It seems to me for the golfer uh, not to be a terribly usable function, but if you have used it and if you know how to use it better than I do, please do leave a comment below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, but uh, so far I've just been using the adjust button on top. Fifteenth hole here at West Hill. It's a par three. It's one of the hardest holes on the golf course, actually. And I know that the yardage is less than 182 because just behind where the camera is set, there's a marker by the side of the tee telling me the hole is 182. But this is quite a long way forward from there, about 20 yards or so. But what is it exactly to the flag? Okay, there we go. So that looks pretty good. It's possibly one more click on from where I've got it. That's saying 155. One click on is saying 169. Given that it's 182 just behind where the camera is, I'm going to play to the 169 yardage because that feels to me like it's probably about right. Am I 100% sure that it's right? No. Uh, is it about right? I think so. Right, so I'm going to hit a 7 iron, which is usually about right for me from this sort of yardage. Uh, it's slightly into the wind, but there's hardly any wind really, to be honest with you, um, this morning. So let's give it a go. Okay, I've hit a pretty good shot there. That's straight at it, actually. Um, and well, we'll go and have, up and have a look and see how close that actually is, but that's a really good shot for me. Uh, I'd be happy with that. It looks like it's about the right yardage. Let's check to see what the Bushnell is saying it is. So, quick go with the Bushnell, turn it on, and then yardage 167. Uh, am I sure that it's picked up the flag? Yes, uh, there's no kind of guesswork uh, using this as there was with the Sodar, but having said all of those things, just two yards in it between what I was getting with the Sodar and what I was getting with the Bushnell, I'd say that's pretty good. Okay, so this is where that shot finished, about um, no more than sort of six, seven, eight feet behind the flag. Uh, I'll definitely take that on this hole. This is one of the best shots I've hit into this hole. Can I make a two? Not quite, but an easy par. Okay, so I've had a really good opportunity to test out this Sodal rangefinder over the last few weeks, but particularly here today at West Hill, and I feel like I'm in a good position to talk about whether this is something worth investing in. And there are plus points and there are minus points, and I'm gonna start with the plus points. So first and foremost, this is incredibly cheap, and it has offered me accurate yardages some of the time. So for, for that £12.36, you're going to get something that you will, will give you an accurate yardage, although you're going to have to be very good at operating it, I will say that. Uh, the other thing is it's incredibly lightweight, and once you get used to it, it's fairly easy to use, actually. 
once you start to get used to how it works, and it has taken me a few weeks of using it, it's pretty easy to use, it's so lightweight, the, the little case it comes with is great, sits on the bag or in the bag really nicely, doesn't take up any room. So it's, it's great from that perspective as well. Now the other thing I'll say is that I think this is usable if you've got a fairly good idea what the yardage is before you start. So for instance, on a hole like this, par three, uh, fourth hole here at West Hill, this is 193 yards. I know that from here, it's somewhere in the region of 193 yards. I can turn around, I can use this range finder here, and I'll probably be able to zero in on a bit more of a precise yardage with this, whilst also knowing roughly the territory we're talking about. When you don't have that original information, then I'm not sure I'd be 100% confident relying on the information I got from this without also having a, a, a second opinion coming from elsewhere. And many golf courses around the world and in this country have a yardages on sprinkler heads, so it's not like that information isn't available to you. So there are some people out there for whom this might be a good option, but there were some issues uh, with it for me. The first, and probably the biggest issue I think, is that you've got to have the steadiest hand to be able to use this, a really steady hand, because you have to line up the green at the bottom with the flag at the top, and that's tricky to do. With a seven times magnification, when you're magnifying that far, any slight movement in your hand, and you're gonna start second guessing yourself as to whether you've actually got the yardage that you intend to get. I found myself whilst using this, also going for a second opinion with the Bushnell on more than one occasion. Uh, the next negative point is just how long it takes to get a yardage. This adjust button at the top here, I found myself, you know, you get into position, you keep tapping it, tapping it, tapping it, tapping it, until that little pointer at the top comes down to the top of the flag. It's fiddly, it takes significantly longer than it takes with, for instance, the bushnell that I've been using to get a yardage that you think is about right. And thirdly, uh, finally, you're not going to be able to get as many yardages with something like this as you will get with a laser rangefinder like the Bushnell that I've been using. For instance, if you're on the T of a par four and you want to know what it is to a bunker out there in the distance, you're not going to be able to use this to find out what that yardage is. You're going to have to ask a friend or you're going to have to figure it out in your own mind. With my uh, rangefinder that I've been using for the last few years, I've used it on numerous occasions to work out how far it is, for instance, to a tree at the end of the fairway or to a bunker, whatever it might be. That's where those rangefinders really do come in handy on top of providing very good, accurate yardages very quickly indeed. So there you have it. That is the Sodar Golf Rangefinder. Guys, uh, please do leave some comments below. What do you think of this? Do you think it's worth uh, testing out for yourselves. Obviously, uh, if it's my choice, I've already got a bushel in the bag, I'll stick with it, very happy with it. But that is a premium rangefinder, and with the price differential between the two, I appreciate there's gonna be a lot of people out there that won't want to spend in excess of 300 pounds on a laser rangefinder. If you don't want to spend that sort of money, you will be giving up on certain things. If you dip down to this sort of level, I hope you can uh, kind of get an idea for the sort of things you'll be able to uh, use it for and the sort of things that you won't be able to use it for, but please do leave comments below. We'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Guys, thank you very much for watching the video. If you've liked what you watched, please do hit the like button. But for now, from West Hill, it's goodbye.